Hey guys, EBP Man here, and in today's video, we're gonna be reviewing a mini PC. This is a Ryzen 5 mini PC that's gonna be great for home computing and for light gaming. Let's go ahead and check it out. Now, before taking a closer look at the mini PC itself, let's check out the website where you can order this and also the different specs that you can look at. So first of all, this is from a company called Minis Forum. Uh, it's a mini PC at $399, which I think is very affordable for the processor and all, everything that you're getting. Uh, you do have high degree of configuration. You can go with, with or without RAM or SSD or go from anywhere from eight uh, gig of RAM 128 gig storage all the way up to 32 gig up to 512. It does come with multiple adapters that you can use either US you can have a UK adapter just make sure that you choose the right one for the country that you're in. Now as we scroll down this page let's highlight some of the main or top features here. Uh, Ryzen 5 an AMD Ryzen 5 3550H CPU it also has a Radeon Vega 8 graphics card this is all integrated silent fan as well you have pre-installed uh, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and the Wi-Fi is Wi-Fi 6 which is good has two slats for memory easy to upgrade and then this is the kicker here it could support you see this right three 4k monitors three 4k monitors at 60 Hertz you also have a 2.5 um, SATI support and then uh, m.2 so let's take a look at some of the performance specs that they have here before we keep on going now from a performance perspective you can see what the single core multi-core and 3d mark performance ratings are and it's doing uh, relatively well once again this is gonna be something that will do well for like a League of Legends uh, this will do a great wow you just have to watch you know what your graphics uh, settings are at uh, so light gaming I wouldn't have this for intense gaming gaming. Uh, this is also going to do really well when it comes to home use. So if you think about all of you that are either working from home or going to school from home and you're looking for something that's affordable and also compact, this may be the solution for you. Uh, everything here is very configurable despite the fact that it's, it's so tiny and so compact. And you can see kind of like uh, the illustration here where you have um, the RAM going in. But well, let's do this. Let's check out the, the box itself and see um, all the features. And in addition to your power AC adapter, you're going to have two video out cables, right, that you'll be able to use. And then this mounting bracket. Now, the cool thing about this mounting bracket is that you can use it to connect it to the back of your monitor. So literally tuck it away and all you'll have is a keyboard and a monitor, which is going to really give you a crispy, clean setup. Now, as we take a look at the, the box itself, this is how small this thing is. I'm just going to put my hand on it. You can see how this is. I want to put my Galaxy Fold right next to it so you can get kind of like a sizing comparison. So you can see it. We'll go ahead and put the Fold right on top, right? And if I were to open up the Fold, this will be the crazy part. You can see that it kind of is bigger. The Fold is bigger than this mini PC. Uh, Ryzen 5, as we mentioned, and also the Radeon graphics card. And uh, the neat thing about this is that if you push right here, you're able to have access immediately uh, to um, the, again, to have an SSD drive, to expand the memory, right? And you can see all the internals right here. Uh, the neat thing about this is that you can mount your SSD uh, right here. So it has, it comes with mounting screws and you can put it, tuck away really, really nicely. And all of this in this really compact package. In the front here, you have a couple things going on. Uh, you do have some USB ports, right? Some modern USB ports, USB-C. You have, again, a mic. You have a reset button so that if you do mess around, let's say with the, with the BIOS, for example, and you screw things up where it just doesn't boot, you can uh, do a hard reset here. You have your um, audio uh, going out as well. And then you have your power button. On this side, on the back, you have um, some USB. Uh, here's again your video out that you have going on. Uh, you have dual gigabit LAN output and then you have your power and you have your cooling on this side. Uh, cooling on the bottom and as you can see that's really all there is to it. Super cool. So why don't we power this up and we'll see how it performs. Now I chose to go with a mobile-like setup given the footprint of this mini PC. So I have a portable monitor that you see here. I also have a portable keyboard. I have a Logitech mouse that's out of frame right now. But you're basically seeing something that is very uh, mobile friendly. Now you could connect this PC, this mini PC, to a full-size monitor if you wanted to. But with all of us working at home or actually going to school from home, if you wanted to set something up in a corner, you can see how little this footprint can be. Now. This is running a full version of Windows, and I wanted to show you that for a second. So we're going to come in here. Let's make sure that that's uh, something that you can read because it's a little bright right now. Uh, as you take a look at what you see right here, um, all the details about this PC are pretty uh, available here. So first of all, you see the memory, the processor. You also then, as we scroll down here, notice that this is running a 64-bit version of the operating system. So this is Windows 10, and you can see it here, Windows version 10. 
So really like the fact that uh, it's coming with a full version of Windows that's gonna give you a lot of flexibility when it comes to running software. Now the other thing I have going on here that I wanted to show you is that I do have um, several versions of, of, I would say, Microsoft application running, or several applications rather. I have Word running here, and you can see uh, my Word version here. I have Excel running here, and this is what Excel will look like. And then I also have PowerPoint. So again, this is gonna suit really well for school or for work. You could have Google products as well, like Google Sheets, um, Google Docs, that would work well as well. So a lot of flexibility in that area. Now from a performance uh, perspective, let's go ahead and go into another tab here for a second. And here I have a YouTube, or this is my YouTube page. And, and you, you notice that this gray bar uh, down here in the bottom basically indicates how much has been cached. A lot of it's been cached. So if I hit play, it should start up immediately, right? And there it goes, right? So, but the real test is saying, if I go beyond this cached area, how well does it perform? So if I go somewhere, let's say up here, you see that? Now, again, this little gray area is the cached area. I'm gonna go ahead of it, hit here, and you can see how fast it jumped to that point. Do the same thing over here. So from a performance perspective, it does really well. Now, if you're worried about Netflix, Hulu, um, you know, Prime Video, any of that stuff, you shouldn't have a problem with this because it performs so well. Now, how about a speed test? Let's do a speed test. So we're gonna see how well it does wireless, wirelessly, right? So we're gonna hit uh, go, and we're gonna let it run. And let's see uh, how well it does. Now, what I should expect up here is to get, you know, just shy of 300 megabits. So if we can get um, anywhere in that area, that would be good. So uh, 248, 250. Hmm. Let's see if we get up to 260. All right, so 256. And then from an upload perspective, I'm, I get typically close to 40. And again, and this is on a high-powered machine. This is definitely not a high-powered machine. And... It's doing respectful. It's really respectable when you think about it. Uh, 256 download and then uh, 40 megabits upload. Uh, the next thing we'll take a look at is an application that I ran on the device, uh, which was OB this uh, program called uh, User uh, Benchmark, right? So I ran this just to see how well uh, it was doing. So let's go ahead and go into the Benchmark um, application. Let's see which tab that I have it on. I think I had it on this one. All right, so here we have our user benchmark. And if we go to the very top, uh, the results that I see here really don't surprise me at all. I'm looking at gaming, it's a tree trunk. It's really not a gaming rig at this price point. You know, you wouldn't expect it. But from a desktop perspective, look at this. It's, it's classified as a battleship, 74% battleship. Workstation, again, it's not there. It's right in the middle. So this is a great, you know, as we were talking about, this is a great machine for use for home, for school, for all those settings. Notice what it's saying over here. Uh, it's basically saying that PC status, uh, that basically that it's, pro it's performing way above expectations, 91st percentile. And that means that out of 100 PCs with the exact same components, nine performed better. The overall PC percentile is the average of each of its individual components. This PC is likely operated by a technical master. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, but still, it, it gave it a good rating. Now, when you look at the processor, you know, it's basically saying right here, Finally, with gaming score 74.8, the CPU is suitable for 3D gaming, right? So it's gonna work well, but again, it's not gonna be a beast or anywhere, anything like that. And then over here, you can see uh, the graphics areas where it took a hit, and but again, it'll, it'll do well in some light gaming. As we scroll down, you can see how the individual components performed. Uh, AMD Ryzen, 74.8, gave it a very good. The graphics card, uh, not so good, and you can see that here. Uh, but it's also saying that it's performing above expectations, right? That's good. Uh, the Here, the, uh, the storage, a beast. 187%, it's outstanding. Uh, memory, uh, it's average, right? But it's performing way above expectations. So each one of these pieces, while in itself is not performing spectacularly, um, in comparison uh, to other devices with similar spec components, it's performing really well. So guys, that wraps up our review of this mini PC. This is a great option for those of you who are looking to have a affordable solution for home computing. You have a monitor. Um, and again, this you can connect this to a TV as well. So you don't really have to have a PC monitor. Literally with this, all you really need is a keyboard, a mouse, this unit, and then any monitor that you have in your home. It's a great option, especially with all of us working from home, going to school from home, or if you're just looking for something for word processing and light gaming, this will work too.